Hi there, it's Bill Peterson, aka The White Tornado, here for Geek Funk Labs, and back with another in my series of lesson videos for Fluid Patcher, the Python interface that I wrote for the Fluid Synth Sound Font Synthesizer that lets you create versatile patches that you can use in a variety of performance situations. In this video, I'll show you how you can send MIDI messages directly from your patches and bank files, allowing you even more control over your sound. As you can see, I have the desktop version of Fluid Patcher opened up, and I have the beginnings of a bank file written with just a few simple patches so far. All my presets are on MIDI channel 1, and I haven't added any special router rules, so my keyboard and its controls will just work in the default way. I'll open the MIDI monitor from the tools menu so we can see what messages are being received. As you can see, the keys send note messages, and the different controls send control changes. As you may recall from the last lesson, the MIDI specification says that some controller numbers should correspond to specific things. For example, controller number 1 should be the modulation wheel, uh, controller number 7 should be the volume slider. This is so that synthesizers, including sound fonts, can respond to some of those control changes in a predictable way. So when you move the modulation wheel, you get vibrato. Not all sound fonts follow the recommendations. For example, notice the piano doesn't do vibrato which kind of makes it like a real piano. All right, listen closely for this next thing. When I leave the modulation wheel at a high value and then switch patches, the new patch has its vibrato at full, even though I didn't move the modulation wheel for that patch. So Fluid Synth remembers the control changes that were sent on each channel and applies them to the new preset. This can be a useful thing. For example, if you use your volume slider to turn the volume down and then change patches, you don't want to have to turn it down again. However, for vibrato, even though I'll probably use it on some of the other patches, if I forget that it's on, when I switch to the other patch, it'll sound weird. So what I can do is use the messages keyword to have my bank file send a MIDI control change message that sets the value of controller 1 to 0 every time I change patches. If you go to the wiki on the Fluid Patcher GitHub, which is linked down in the video description, you can find an explanation of the messages keyword. If you need a quick refresher on MIDI messages, you can check out the beginning of the previous Fluid Patcher lesson. You can see the format of the messages here. So let's go to our bank file and create a messages keyword and add the first list item, which will be a MIDI message of type CC on channel one, controller number one with a value of zero. So just like other keywords, the ones at the bank level get applied first every time you change patches. So when we switch to a new patch, this will zero out the vibrato for us. Let's look at another example. You might have noticed that the Vintage Dreams Wave sound font is kind of loud. Rather than manually change the volume whenever we switch to that patch, we could use a MIDI message to set the volume to a lower level. But this doesn't actually limit the maximum volume, and if we move the volume slider while we're in that patch, it could jump up to a high level again. What you can do is use controller number 11, which is MIDI expression. It's kind of intended to be used for temporary changes in volume, like crescendos, and the actual volume is the combination of controller 7 and controller 11. So here we can use it to set a maximum volume for this channel. Then at the bank level, we'll send a message to set expression to the maximum value for the other channels. Now, even though control changes will probably be the most useful to you, you can send any type of MIDI message this way. Let's look at sending a note message, for example. I'm going to set the TR-101 drum set from Vintage Dreams Waves on channel 2 at the bank level, which you can do. That means it'll be selected on every patch. Now I'll add a note message at the bank level on channel 2, and we'll make it note number 56, which is cowbell, and choose a not-too-loud value of 80. Now you hear that cowbell every time you change patches, which might be useful if you want some sort of audio feedback. Let's divert a minute to talk about how sound fonts actually handle MIDI messages. A sound font file contains a bunch of audio samples, and then the sound font specification describes different generators which control how those samples will be played. A sound font file can also contain modulators that control how different MIDI messages will affect the generators. There are some default modulators described in the sound font specification, which I've linked down in the video description, for things like vibrato, volume, pitch bend, or even how loud you play a note. 
There are also default modulators for the chorus and reverb level. You can also add your own custom modulators to sound fonts, and the easiest way to do this is to use a sound font editor like Polyphony. Sometime in the future, hopefully, I'll be able to make a detailed video about how to do this, but for now, I'll show you the mod synth sound font that I include with Fluid Patcher. The sounds in this font are very simple, but I added a bunch of custom modulators that allow you to access the synthesis parameters using control changes. We'll focus on just a couple parameters as an example. If you look in the comments of the mod synth sound font, you can see that attack time is control chain 73 and the filter cutoff is control chain 74. Let's go back to fluid patcher and add a patch with mod synth on channel one. Now I want this sound to have a fast attack and no frequency filtering by default, so I'll add MIDI messages to set both of those to zero. And when you're doing a list, instead of putting the items on separate lines with dashes, you can also just enclose them in square brackets like this. Now I'll add a router rule so I can sweep that filter cutoff frequency while I'm playing. That sounds pretty good, but when I switch to a different patch and come back to VM synth, that filter cutoff goes back to zero. Sometimes I want to be able to set an initial value for something like this, but be able to change it and have that change be persistent when I switch patches. For this we can use the init keyword. This goes at the bank level, and things inside the keyword get applied once when the bank is first loaded. You can also put fluid settings here. For example, if I'm not going to change my reverb parameters in any of the patches, I might as well define them here rather than at the bank level and having them reset every time I change patches. So, I'll move my control change for the initial filter cutoff frequency here, and I'll also add a default reverb send level, which is control change 91. And we'll just add a bank level router rule so we can modify the reverb. And now, because those control changes just get sent once, we get the initial values we want, but we can modify the parameters using the controllers we selected, and when we switch patches, the values stay the same. At this point in the lesson series, you should have a lot of tools that will let you create patches that behave in exactly the way you need for your performances. As I continue this series, I'm going to get into some more advanced techniques, as well as some cool add-ons that Fluid Patcher has like sequencers, arpeggiators, MIDI file players, and effects. So stay tuned, and stay funky!